Is the RTX 4090 really worth it? Or is the 4080 Super good enough? It's a question I see a lot. So in this video, we are going to find out. My name is Matt. I'm a former rocket scientist. And my goal is to help you make the right component choices and put them together the right way every single time. In the Is It Worth It series, we've been helping you make the right choice by showing you just how much you can expect to increase the performance of your system with a drop in upgrade. In this video, our focus will be on NVIDIA's top gaming GPU, the RTX 4090, the current king of gaming GPUs. As you know by now, I always like to over deliver in my videos. So in addition to showing you benchmarks across 16 games at three different resolutions, I am also going to demystify some key graphics features, such as ray tracing, DLSS, and reflex, and let you know if you should consider using them in games. If you stay to the end, I will also share with you some secret settings and control panel that every NVIDIA GPU owner should know about. It's really not rocket science, so before we jump into the benchmarks, let's first discuss some of the key graphics features that NVIDIA markets with their GPUs. When you buy an NVIDIA GPU, you get access to a suite of advanced graphics features that are supposed to enhance your gaming experience. These features include AI accelerated ray tracing, deep learning super sampling or DLSS, and Reflex. But what are they and should you consider using them in games? Let's demystify each of these one at a time so you don't have to keep guessing. Ray tracing simulates how light behaves in the real world. It is a rendering technique that can realistically simulate the lighting of a scene and its objects by rendering physically accurate reflections, refractions, shadows, and indirect lighting. It is incredibly taxing on your hardware because tracing every path that light can take in every frame requires a large amount of computation. Another way to think of ray tracing is to look all around you. The objects you're seeing are illuminated by beams of light. Now turn that around and follow the path of those beams backwards from your eye to the objects that the light interacts with. That's ray tracing. NVIDIA RTX GPUs have dedicated hardware for doing these computations, with tensor cores for AI acceleration providing real-time denoising, which drastically reduce the amount of rays needing to be cast, as well as ray tracing cores to accelerate bounding volume hierarchy, or BVH traversal, which is the most time-consuming part of ray tracing calculations. This is where NVIDIA has a distinct advantage. Their RTX hardware accelerates ray tracing in games to allow you to experience the beauty of ray tracing at playable frame rates. There are two other related terms that should also be mentioned because they are important to understand. The first is rasterization, which is a technique used to display three-dimensional objects on two-dimensional screen and is the primary graphics technique used today in game engines. While rasterization is still computationally intensive, it is much less so compared with ray tracing. That's why when you turn ray tracing on in games, the FPS will always drop. The second is called path tracing, which is an even more intensive form of ray tracing that traces hundreds or thousands of rays through each pixel and follows the rays through numerous bounces off or through objects before reaching the light source in order to collect color and lighting information. Path tracing taxes even the best GPUs today, so it's something to look forward to in the future. Deep Learning Super Sampling, or DLSS, is a type of video rendering technique developed by NVIDIA that boosts frame rates by rendering frames at a lower resolution than displayed and using deep learning or AI to upscale the frames so that they look like they should at the native resolution. It relies on dedicated hardware such as tensor cores and an optical flow accelerator together with AI to do this in real time. For example, with DLSS, a game's frames could be rendered at 1080p resolution, then upscaled and output at 4K resolution, allowing frame rates consistent with 1080p, but delivering sharper images that look similar to 4K. That sounds awesome, right? The big issue with any frame generation technique like DLSS is that the extra frames are not generated for free. The GPU needs to calculate and render these additional frames, which results in a latency increase. So although the frame rate increases, the system latency also increases, which might not be a big issue in single player games, but it is an issue in competitive games like Call of Duty. Reflex is NVIDIA developed software that helps to reduce system latency and improve responsiveness in games. This is particularly useful in first person shooters where latency really matters. The software consists of two applications, Reflex Low Latency Mode for reducing system latency in games to help players improve their competitive performance, and Reflex Analyzer to easily and quickly measure system latency. The promise of Reflex is that it provides faster target acquisition, quicker reaction times, and the best aim precision for competitive games. This is a useful capability that has been integrated into many competitive games, such as Call of Duty, Overwatch, and Valorant, and can help to offset the latency issue 
issues that exist with frame generation techniques like DLSS. The big question with each of these technologies is should you use them? The honest answer is it depends on the type of games you play and the hardware you play them on. If you're playing single player games, then I would recommend using ray tracing and reflex if your games support them. If your 1% lows at your native monitor resolution and selective game settings are below 60 hertz, then I would also consider turning DLSS on. Now, if you're playing competitive online games, then I would only turn on reflex if your game supports it, of course, and leave DLSS and RT off. Ray tracing looks amazing, but your objective with these games is to maximize FPS and minimize input latency, so it doesn't make sense to use it. Nvidia will continue to improve these technologies over time, so as new versions are released, you should definitely revisit them to see if they make sense for you. Hopefully that helps to clear up what these technologies really are and when you should use them. As mentioned earlier, our focus for this video is on Nvidia's top gaming GPU, the RTX 4090, and specifically how it compares with the RTX 4080 Super, arguably the second best GPU on the market today. The test system being used to run the benchmarks is my AMD-based open bench table with the following components. For the CPU, we have an AMD Ryzen 7 7800X3D. For the motherboard, we have a Gigabyte X670E Aorus Master. For memory, we have G-Skill Trident Z5neo RGB 32GB DDR5 6000 at CL30. For storage, we have a 2TB SK Hynix Platinum P41 NVMe Gen 4 M.2 SSD. For CPU cooler, we have an EVGA CLCX 360mm AIO. And for the PSU, we have a Gigabyte GP AP 1200PM 1200W Platinum Power Supply. Affiliate links for all of these components are listed in the description below. All testing was performed with both cards at default out-of-the-box settings with no overclocks. I selected these settings to avoid any issue with Silicon Lottery, given that these settings will run stable on all Founders Edition GPUs. With the test system ready to go, let's check the benchmarks. As I mentioned earlier in the video, there are a few secret settings in the NVIDIA control panel that are switched off by default, but you really should switch on. The first thing to do is open the NVIDIA control panel, then click on system information in the bottom left corner. Check and make sure that resizable bar has a yes next to it. If not, then you should go into your BIOS and turn it on. Next, go to display and change resolution on the left. 
Make sure that you have your native resolution selected under PC and not one of the resolution options under Ultra HD, HD, SD. You should then make sure you select the highest refresh rate that your monitor supports. In this case, it's 144 hertz. Now for the secret settings. Under three, apply the following settings. Select use NVIDIA color settings and make sure that highest 32 bit is selected under desktop color depth and that the highest number is selected under output color depth. In this case, it's 10 BPC. Then make sure to hit apply. The output color depth that you can select will be based on your resolution, refresh rate, and video out connection type that you use. For example, if using DisplayPort 1.4, your bandwidth will be lower than if using HDMI 2.1. Next, go over to video on the left and select adjust video color settings. Then under two, how do you make color adjustments? Select with the NVIDIA settings and select the advanced tab and then select full zero to 255 next to dynamic range. Again, make sure you select apply to apply these settings and that's it. I'm really not sure why these settings aren't turned on by default fault, but at least now you will be extracting maximum image quality from your NVIDIA GPU. NVIDIA recently released a public beta of a new NVIDIA app that modernizes and unifies the control panel and GeForce Experience apps. So hopefully these settings will be turned on by default in the future. I also hope that they finally add some overclocking options in their software, much like AMD has in Adrenaline. But based on the initial beta, it doesn't look like they will, at least initially. In this video, we tested the current king of gaming GPUs, the RTX 4090 against the RTX 4080 Super to see if it's really worth it. As you can see from the results, it was, not surprisingly, a decisive victory for the 4090 with 14 wins and only two draws across 16 gaming benchmarks at three different resolutions. Given how decisive the average gaming performance boost was across 15 games, it's easy to recommend the RTX 4090 based purely on performance, since the margins at higher resolutions are anywhere between 10 and 30% which is significant. When we look at power efficiency, there is really no meaningful difference between the cards, which again is not surprising given that they are both based on the same NVIDIA Ada Lovelace architecture. But the question remains, is this increase in performance really worth it? In order to answer this question properly, we need to look at cost. The 4090 Founders Edition retails for a whopping 600 US dollars more than the recently released 4080 Super FE. If you convert that into gaming efficiency or FPS per dollar, then the 4080 Super delivers much better value at 4K, with an average FPS increase of over 20% and a 1% low increase of over 30% when compared with the 4090. You get higher performance with the 4090, but you pay a disproportionately higher price for that extra performance. So the answer to the question is no, the RTX 4090 is not worth it. For most gamers, I would strongly recommend that you get a 4080 Super and use the cost savings somewhere else in your system, such as getting a better CPU, monitor, SSD, memory, any number of those things. If you want the absolute best GPU on the market today, get a 4090. It's a truly amazing card without any peers. But if you do, be prepared to pay a large premium for it. The more sensible choice is a 4080 Super. But who said PC gamers and enthusiasts like us are sensible? Remember, it's not rocket science, it's Lego. My goal is to help you make the right component choices and put them together the right way every single time. Thank you for watching this video in the Is It Worth It Upgrade series. If you enjoyed today's video, please hit that like button and subscribe so that you don't miss out on future episodes. Please also comment and offer suggestions on future upgrades that you would like me to look at. Bye for now.